everyone. The teacher was talking to her junior class about God and how hard it was to know about God. Where is God? the teacher asked. I know where God is, called out one of the little boys. He's in our bathroom. In the bathroom, the teacher replied. Yes, every morning my dad stomps up the stairs, raps on the bathroom door and yells, My God, are you still in there? Yes, God is in the bathroom because he's everywhere. Our happiness as human beings lies in acknowledging his existence and living by his commandments. The Old Testament tells us that at the foot of Mount Sinai, the Israelites fashioned a golden calf, called it God, and then worshipped it. This happened as Moses was receiving the Ten Commandments from the true God at the top of the same mountain. Now the first of these commandments is, I am the Lord your God, you shall not have strange gods before me. So, in obedience to the Lord, the golden calf was smashed to smithereens at the foot of the mountain. Are there any golden calves in our society which we need to smash? Life and death issues come to mind. At Auschwitz, at Auschwitz, when the overpacked train load of people arrived, it was decided who would live or die. I'm told that it's not uncommon these days for a doctor to ask an expectant mother if she wants to keep her baby. Now that's really playing God and unworthy of someone who's taken the Hippocratic Oath. The next thing, they'll be asking poorly elder elderly people if they would like to die. We have ways and means of putting you to sleep. Another example of playing God. Now, often people put the blame on God or religion for all the wars and regional conflicts in our world. However, the breaking of God's first commandment is what causes wars, not God. Even natural disasters are often triggered by humans. Soil erosion, for instance, caused by deforestation often results in fatal landslides. The first commandment requires us to be stewards of God's creation, not exploiters. But there are caricatures of God in circulation as well. One such is what I heard called the cuddly bear God. This is a sugar-coated God who is falling over himself to smooth out all the ruffles of our lives. This parody of God keeps us shielded from every pain. And yet, how many people have found the true God only in pain? How many people have turned from false gods only in the midst of a struggle? Jesus asks us in the Gospels to take up our crosses every day and follow him, not use religion as an escape hatch from life's problems. Jesus never wanted to be cast in the mould of a superman, a quick fixer of everything which goes wrong. And by the way, he won't send rain from a blue sky either, no matter how much we pray. In the Gospels we read that we can only share the glory of Christ if we have already carried his cross and shared in his sufferings. So I think the cuddly bear God is for room 101. The book of Genesis says that God made man in his own image and likeness. Some aim to refashion God into their own image. Some even want to claim that God made a mistake the way he created us, so they have to correct it. We don't play God or sanitise the demands of the gospel for our own advantage. Isn't it best to let God be God? and let us to recognise our creaturely dependence on him. The bottom line is, God never made any mistakes, even with you. Thank 
thank you very much for listening and God bless you all. Oh.